Hello everyone, uh, Damien Sharp here, and I'm here to talk to you about a new, it's going to be a course, a book, and kind of exploration into creating thriving relationships. So it's something I've been uh, wanting to work on for a long time. I'm finally uh, pushing through with this. And the concept is creating thriving relationships. And what I discovered as I was uncovering some of my uh, dynamics around certain things, being at time, money, uh, family, uh, mother, father, uh, personal body, health, all these different things that we are in relationship with. We've created a relationship and a dynamic around that. And the foundation of each relationship, um, be it positive or negative, is the foundation of each relationship is created by a belief. So there's a belief or a concept that eventually becomes a belief about yourself. It can be something that creates a ceiling for yourself, uh, saying, you know, be it around money, that you're you're putting your own self-worth connected with money. You're out of some issues or challenges that happened maybe when you were a kid or when you were older. And uh, but that's that's where in a sense the the relationship gets created kind of at the foundation of these beliefs and these, these uh beliefs that are thus we've grabbed on to either by our parents by society and we kind of solidified through experiences that we, that we had they could have been trauma they could have been great experiences whatever they are um but they created a kind of kind of a concrete system of this belief and it could be positive it could be negative and then it's what keeps moving forward that relationship that we have so what i found that was really powerful when i first looked into this i haven't really seen anyone doing this but i started putting together this idea of taking inventory with anything taking inventory with your with your money, with your business, with, uh, you know, 12 steps, whatever you're taking inventory with. But this idea of taking inventory around my relationship with time and with money. And what I, what I did, and this is what I'm asking you to do because it worked for me to whatever level it has so far. And it, I'm sure if I could keep doing the work and I'm continuing to do the work and I'm, and I'm learning more learning more about myself and learning more about creating better healthier relationships with uh, the world around me and the things around me and the people and uh, myself and my own mind and my body and and so money and time are the two things I'd like to look at so you can think about these for yourself so for me time and money both uh, where the negative comes in is where there's a constrictive feeling around it so with time you could you could be unlike me my constriction showed up more as uh, I was relaxed about time, didn't care, was kind of a punk about time, people wanted me to be there in five minutes, wanting this, this, and getting mad if I was ever late. Uh, so I had that kind of more punk attitude and, and seemed probably really relaxed and probably irritated, irritant by someone that was just, maybe had a healthy relationship with time. Or had a constrictive relationship but like me, but moved it in a different way. So the other way that I um, met other people, they have a constrictive relationship with time. So they stress out about time. They stress out about other people being late. Um, they stress out about being late. So they're completely stressed within those 15 minutes of trying to get there 10, 15 minutes early. Um, but there's a stress behind it. There's a, there's an angst behind it. And that in anything is not a healthy relationship. I, I would tell you because it's creating a constriction around, around time, around money, whatever. So the way that can show up for money for people is it can be like me. I was more relaxed about it. Didn't want to look at money. Didn't even want to budget anything. Uh, and then you have the, the same verge. So I'm like, it's freaking me out to look at money or it's freaking me out to look at time. And I'll explain to you why that is. For me, it was. And then for the, for the other person, still constrictive relationship, they could be frugal. They could not want to, they could, in a sense, think about water and when you're damming a river. So abundance of time, health, energy, money, all these things, you can think of them as like energy of a flowing river. And when we dam it, because we're going to control it and we're scared, we're going to lose it. Um, it could be for me, it was, I didn't want to look at it. 
So it could be you're scared you're going to lose it. There's not going to be enough. Um, so anytime we're doing that, that's not going to create abundance. People that we know that have a lot of abundance, they do move a lot of their money into into business, other businesses and other ventures. They don't just hold their billion dollars in a big reservoir and and let it trickle out and only every once in a while go to the thrift store and buy something. That would be very fruitful. But uh, so so um, so you have these dynamics. So the way I uncovered these, I took an inventory. So I started with time. So look at time, our money. Think about the one you're going to do an inventory for. And your inventory is going to start from the first time you remember your interaction with time or with money. So you're starting from the very first to now. And so you're just doing a free write of all the times you remember having money. Oh, I was five. Oh, then this time was seven. It, it's not going to be like every little time you remember money, but there are going to be times with money or with time that that stand out to you, that you remember. It can be good and it can be bad. It doesn't really matter. You're just looking at those. So after you write that down and you write out your scope with time or money, whichever one you're doing right now, um, you could pause and you could do it if you want and then come back. Or you could just listen to everything I'm saying and then do it and then just kind of, uh, you could take notes on the next thing to do. So after you, you do that inventory, in a sense, and looking at, in a sense, your history with time, your history with money, and and uh, you're writing out a little story, in a sense, a little a little web of of how you started here at whatever age you were that you remember to now, and then what I want you to do, this is what I did that was helpful, is I went back and looked at that. You go back and read it, and as you're reading it and looking at it, or even just. Uh, since you just wrote it, you can almost just be perusing it very quickly, but you're looking for for um, beliefs, you know, that are underneath some of these experiences, beliefs that you could imagine maybe, imagine that you're thinking of another person that went through this. What are some beliefs that that, that child or that, that adult could have put um, behind this experience? How, what could that experience have solidified a sort of belief? And then if you can't really grab onto them totally, think about your, your caregivers, your parents, um, and society at the time, society you grew up in, but caregivers and, and such, and what their beliefs around time or money was, and how they, they may have not even said anything, but how they showed it to you with the way that they related the time and money with you. So, um, so we form those beliefs, and those beliefs can either be expansive, or they can be constrictive. So when when you have a belief that's expansive, it means that there's many, many possibilities. It means in a sense around money, you wouldn't have a ceiling on on how much money you could make, on, on you wouldn't have a, there's not gonna be a belief in there that if you have a lot of money, you're a bad person because it means other people suffer. And uh, there's there's just no ceiling there because you're, you're expansive. You may, not you may only want to get here right now because you may be here and that's probably a better way i want to get from making thirty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars you're not thinking a hundred million and that's fine but ultimately there's not a, your belief has not created a ceiling and and our nara judgment of when you're here or here that somehow you're going to have to atone for your sins of being wealthy so um so in and around time it's the same thing are you constrictive around time are you expansive around time? And so, and you're looking at those and you're seeing the, the experiences and how there's a belief that's there. So when you find that belief, so you're finding that belief that's there. And you may find two or three different beliefs. You may be one belief and you just see how it keeps getting solidified from your negative experiences. And you may see a belief that you've been trying to step into that is more expansive and sometimes it gets supportive and sometimes it just gets back to the old belief that life's hard and it's, you know, and you're not worthy of get, being paid that much or whatever it be. So you, you're thinking about that, you're writing that belief down. So you write that belief down and then you want to create a different belief. So you have the constrictive belief. That's kind of what we're looking at right now. What is the constrictive belief that you have through that story line of, of your of your life so far with money or time. And then 
take that constricted belief, you see that right here, and then write a new belief that is actually expansive. How can you take that belief that um, that uh, time is, let's see, what, what could be, well, that, uh, you know, that it's dangerous to make money, and if I make money, other people suffer. So how can you take, that belief is, is solidified in that there's not enough, and that money in its sense is the root of evil, um, and that just having money makes you more greedy and more greedy. So how could you create a, a belief in there that is, that's your new belief, your new story that you're gonna be living into, that's expansive, where money, money is energy and by, by me opening myself and expanding myself to making more money and having more money come into my life, I can actually give more money out to other people. I can fund smaller businesses, I can do micro loans, I can buy property, and build build homes for and and or I can buy homes and I can give people way better loans for families that want to step into owning property and haven't been able to, and uh, so that's that's expansive. Uh, when I as I'm making more money and becoming wealthy, I can I can share my wealth and I can I can share myself more fully with people because I have stepped into my value more and so by me seeing my value then it's way easier for me to express fully myself and with this with a confidence in the the abilities that were given to me and the the gifts that i'm to be giving to the world so that can be around time and money or anything relationships to love the receiving love and giving love um so so for me I'll get into my thing around time. For me around time, it was my dad was the first one that came up when I did the time inventory, was that my dad was late, like a half hour to school. And when I was maybe in second grade or first grade, I can't remember exactly. But I, regardless of that, I remember putting a value on myself, thinking that my dad was late. He didn't say anything and I got mad. And I realized that I took a, I put a value on that, that I was not valuable to my father. I was not valuable in this situation and not even valuable enough for my dad to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. And who knows, maybe he did. That's just, this is the memory I have. And when this came up, I was, it was my, with my ex and she was getting mad at me for being late. And I was always like five, 10 minutes late. And the biggest thing that I did, the biggest way this manifested for me was I didn't want to look at time. I didn't, I just was like, didn't want to look at it because it would bring up this thing of my value, right? And me having to look and to feel into that. And actually there was a bunch of anger around my, at that time. And, and I'm sure this wasn't the only thing, like I said, there was other things that happened that just keep solidifying this value kind of judgment and belief system I had around that I had to look at the time. So I was getting really mad when my ex was like, upset at me for being five minutes late. And so what I would usually do is say, yeah, I can be there in five minutes. When I knew I had to do this, this, and this, it was gonna take me 20 minutes, but I would rush myself. I would I would be like, ah, you know, and I would be frustrated too. Like, why would you even, you know, how like a punk about it, about, about that. So when I realized I was being really punkish towards her and she was just asking me for a favor, and I made an agreement to be there in five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it was. And then it took me 20 minutes. Um, is that I had made an agreement. I stepped off that agreement. She got upset at me and it brought up all these feelings. And I had to realize this had nothing to do with her. It has nothing to do with the situation. And I had to kind of step out of that, not bring that to that, to that part of our relationship. But I had to step out of that. And that's when I did the, the inventory. I said, I'm going to do an inventory around this thing around time because I'm really, where is this coming from? Why do I feel so angry? And she's not doing anything and no one's actually doing any, I'm doing something to myself. So when I did that, I realized when I did the inventory, I realized that that was the first time that I remember uh, the, the, in a sense, that formation of creating time. And I could combine that with my own, of me not feeling valuable, me not feeling valued. And so me looking at time made me look back at that and so I locked in that thing around my relationship around time. 
And you can say, well, that doesn't have anything to do with time, but it does because that's how I formed my relationship with time. And so I slowly and, and probably still working on this, I've changed my relationship with time where now um, I just don't feel as stressed out. Like if I have to be somewhere at a certain time, um, I'm sure I still have work to do on this, but, but I've created a relationship with time where it feels more expansive. And one of the benefits I've found in that is sometimes even when I'm like, oh, I got to be somewhere in 10 minutes um, and I have this one thing I want to do. Uh, and so I'm finishing that thing and I'm being more expansive about time is I've noticed that time moves. I feel like I have way more time than I used to because I'm not being constrictive around time. And, and time seems more expansive, more open. And uh, as you can say, I'm taking a lot of time to tell you all about this. <laughs> and so with money, it was a similar, it was a similar thing around value. So uh, my dad, and a, it was my dad again, but <laughs> love you dad. But, and it, he was just trying to help me with all these things. It was just the way I took it. So he was trying to help me with a ride to school. Well, he was trying to help me learn about money when I asked for a ride to school. And at my age, my time when I was a kid, Kids, parents didn't usually take kids to school, maybe when they were in first, third grade or whatever. But at this stage, I was probably in fifth grade, sixth grade, something, I don't know. So I rode my bike everywhere. I rode my bike everywhere, to the beach, to the river. To the, I just rode my bike all the time. And I loved that freedom of having my bike. But at this moment, I was feeling really sick. And my dad was not one that would let me stay home when I was sick. Um, I had to be really sick, you know, but I don't even remember that happening. So he was all about like, just go through, you'll be able to figure it out, you'll work it out. And so I was feeling really sick, feverish kind of, and it was raining and so I asked for a ride and he made me pay for it. And I created a story in my head that he made me pay for a half hour of work because he has his shop at the house. So he's working at home at that time. And, and so I realized he's teaching me about money, uh, but at that time I didn't. And I thought I made a story in my head if my sister had asked for a ride that he would have given it to her and not charged her. So then I put this, I created a value judgment around money for myself. And so I did the same thing. I mean, I've done this for so long that this muscle is still there sometimes, even though I've created a different relationship with money, I feel. But, it, but I grew up not wanting to budget my money, not wanting to look at my checkbook, not wanting to talk about money. But it was really hard when I started businesses and I would be trying to tell you how much it's, I'm gonna charge you to paint your house outside, exterior or exterior interior. And I'm trying to bid a whole job and there's a part of me just going, oh, I gotta drop it down, I gotta drop it down, I gotta drop it down and I'd always underbid all the time. And then I stopped, I realized that I had such an issue with this that I just started doing hourly because I couldn't figure out how to not do that. So um, that's one thing to do if you underbid all the time, either do it hourly or create a system where you're you're bidding and look at how you've underbid before and say, well, it's always been 20, 30% and just add 20 to 30% to whatever bid you're doing um, until you can figure out how to not underbid it. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I was in a sense constricting and not wanting to look at it and frustrated dealing with money. I didn't want to deal with money. I just wanted every money just to feel free and easy. I mean, that's really what I wanted. And, but my relationship I created around it is if I ever had to look at money, I also had to look at this time when I felt disvalued and I felt like money was saying that I'm not valuable and looking at it, had, I had to deal with that emotion. So as you're doing that inventory, you're finding these moments. One thing you want to do is also feel those feelings and, and release that, those feelings around it. And you can sometimes move if you felt really stifled, like I can't do anything, my dad's gonna be mad at me. You can be like, ah, I can't believe it. You know, and you don't wanna get, feed that story or feed that, 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 uh, that fear. You're not trying to feed that, but you're just trying to express your body, move your body and realize that that was a story of old. Now you can create a new story. You can create a new belief system. That belief system has not served you. Um, and at that, Point, maybe it served you in that moment uh, but it's not serving you and let's create a new belief so if your belief is um, that there's that there's not like for me around my parents being hippies and it wasn't just them all hippies the idea of having money was you're taking away money from other people if you have money 
you're on the walking on the backs of other people. So I remember that just being a societal thing that came through with the kind of circle that my family was with the hippies and that kind of movement. And, um, and even when I got into kind of still being a hippie punk, that judgment was still there. So, so that, that belief can be there. So in a sense that if you make money, then you're greedy. And if you're greedy, you're stepping on the backs of other people. And that's the only way you can have money. And, um, and then for me, it's like money, uh, money is me having to look at money sh showing me this part of myself where I didn't feel valuable or valued in the same time. And so you're taking that, you're taking, you're looking as you look back at what you wrote, you're looking for beliefs. So you find that belief that was in there and you take that belief and you, that's the constrictive negative belief. And you want to create a new belief that is expansive, that is opening you to, it's just an expansive belief. So you got the constrictive belief and you've got this new expansive belief that you're creating right now. So if it's that there's not enough money and you have to walk on the backs of other people, it could be that there's, there's always enough money. Money is ener energy, money is water. And I can be wealthy and I can share my wealth with others and I can help and support other people to be wealthy with me. So that's expansive, you know, right there. And I'm sure you can create an even better one for you that really feeds your soul and feeds your spirit. And you're going to create that new belief. And for the next, let's say, it takes 20 something days to create a new habit. Do it for 30 days, three to four times a day. Say your new belief to yourself, write it down on a piece of paper, um, write it on your phone and put it as a reminder. Uh, you can write it on your phone and put it as a reminder and you could read it to yourself on your phone, you know, like say it as an audio and the audio could pop up. I'm sure there's a way to do that. You could write it on a piece of paper and every once in a while through the day, pull it out and say this new belief. And so just keep doing that. And if the, there's energy uh, and emotions that come up around your old belief, feel those, move through that, uh, reframe it. You know, realize that you're 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 not a you're not a victim of your parents, uh, society, of your past. Any any you may have felt like one. There may be you may have been a victim in those situations, but not anymore. You're an adult now. You can make new choices. You're not in that situation anymore where the trauma was or whatever. You're here now, and at this point, as an adult or as an older person, you can make new choices. You can look at the old beliefs and you can feel your feelings and get into feeling your power. As you feel your feelings and become expansive, then you start to feel more of your body, your mind, your connection there, creating a healthy relationship there, creating a healthy relationship with time, money, with food, with health, with your loved ones, with you, your siblings, with your children, if you have children, with your partner, with, um, with your living situation, with the way that you give and receive love, all these things are things that you can explore if you see any kind of you know any kind of constrictive relationship you can explore your past from then till now and look at the belief system you had and create a new healthy belief system play with that belief system for 30 days uh, in many different ways you can make a song about it you know, and share this new belief system with either your loved ones with your friends someone that someone that supports you even if it's a, your counselor or whatever. And the one thing I wanted to say is, as you're going through these things that you're doing, sometimes there'll be big traumas that could come up. And I, I will ask you, please, if it does come up to be a big trauma, it's a big trauma point, big thing. And it feels like to go into it feels too much, like you could die, like you're taken back to that place where you felt like your life was threatened or whatever it is. I, I, I implore you not to do this on your own. You know, you can explore this a little bit, but I would say in those areas, go find a somatic therapist. They were the best, I think. A shaman can be great, but somatic therapy is probably them. There are life coaches that do somatic type therapy. If you have a therapist, start working with this with them. Create it. You have a space where you can actually feel that emotion and feel everything, but you want someone there to remind you that you are not there anymore. You're an adult now. And you don't need to, you don't need to re, re, um, what's the word? You don't have to, 
re-traumatize yourself to deal with trauma. And that's the biggest thing I've learned. So you're not having to, if the trauma came and it was so intense like this, when you're dealing and letting go of the trauma, you don't have to go back into it, like rebirthing of the 60s. You, you can find easier, softer ways of letting that go. And that's what I ask you to do. And let's keep this up and I'll make some more videos about this, uh, about some of the next stuff. Okay, peace.